Hi, I'm Larry Kenny of Larkin Automation. This is day 15 of a build of a, 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 a ventilator, a hobby ventilator, just as a project. So, um, I did another video of the basic build of the mechanical part, but after I posted that, I realized by some of the feedback that I wasn't even close. So, um, I ended up doing a bit of research on the uh, on medical uh, ventilators, how they really work. And I've added a lot of software and controls to it since. I, uh, I've added uh, 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 pressure sensors inside the controller and um, I've, I've written an interface program, a data logger that controls the machine, that logs the machine and uh, graphs its displays. So um, it's basically a stepper motor controlled piston pump, variable displacement piston pump, which is, uh, so this is approximately a one liter uh, jar, and, uh, and I have a piston going up and down here, driven by a belt. Now with the software, you can control the volume by varying the stroke. The, the tidal volume per, um, per stroke that goes into the lung. Respiratory rate is calculated actually what the actual respiratory rate of the machine is responding to. The inhalation to exhalation ratio, and that is, this, this cycle means that's going up. If the piston's going up, that means the piston's going down. So it's the ratio of the uptime to the downtime to the pressure cycle. So, and then the P is the positive end expiry pressure. So that's the resting pressure in the in the system. And uh, all these are variable now. This is a basic test system I built. I don't have any medical knowledge really. I just uh, built it according to uh, specifications necessary for a ventilator. So the this is very basic. Other options that would have to be added to it would be an oxygen uh, system where it, it supplies the oxygen in probably with a, a valve and a flow meter. And then the other thing would be an, a CO2 level on the output to see how well the lungs are converting oxygen to CO2. Because that tells the health of the patient. So there's a lot of other things have to be added to make it a functional uh, ventilating system. This is a prototype just for demonstration and uh, just to show it could be done. Now this is a basic system. It has some features in it, like you can set the maximum pressure that is allowed in the uh, in the uh, the person's lungs, and it trips. It, it it holds that pressure. It doesn't exceed it. So there's a minimum pressure and a maximum pressure setting here. The max pressure setting limits the amount of pressure going to the uh, to the lung. You can see here. The green turns to red. Now I lower this number. See it? it um, that's the alarm. So when you hear the beep, that faint beep. Set at 38. It's approximately within a few numbers of that. Pressure on the a sudden spike will trigger it. So if the patient was fighting back and uh, holding his breath or making it hard to breathe, the machine would sense it. Now what this is, this this graph is the air pressure. Uh, basically the hoses. What I've added to it are two electric valves. 
So that's the outgoing hose. Then there's a mixer here, which just mixes the outgoing uh, the hose. And that goes into the patient's lung. And then there's an exit hose that goes out of the patient's lung and exits through another valve. The first thing it does is it, on, before a stroke, closes the exit valve, opens the entry valve, builds the pressure up, and when it hits the top, it, or a preset pressure, it opens the exit valve to release the pressure. Now it'll also open the exit valve if it hits a maximum set pressure as well. Now this isn't calibrated at all, so these numbers don't mean real world numbers, like this isn't centimeters of water. It's a, it's a pressure on a uh, D to A converter. So those would be, need to be calibrated later. That's not too hard to do. It's just a conversion factor. So let's say we want to change the volume. You can see it's going down to here on the downstroke. If I change that on the next cycle, it's going to go to 400 milliliters. See? And right down to here this time. And now it's pumping more into the, the, the milk bag lung. In Canada, we use milk bags. And uh, you can vary the ratio or the time of, between the up and the down. Okay. Now, if you, if you lower the minimum pressure, it, it will wait. It's waiting for the minimum pressure to happen. So you, you can have it set it so that it waits for the patient to fully exhale before it starts to cycle again. It can also do manual mode, automatic manual mode, or trigger mode. In trigger mode, it will wait until the patient takes a breath, tries to breathe in, and the pressure drops before it will start its cycle. So if I switch to trigger mode, I've, I've removed this and I've added a hose. If I switch to trigger mode now and reduce the peep number, it'll wait until you draw a breath. So, it, if it senses a little pressure in the negative, That's another mode. On real ventilators, they have these different modes, depending on the patient um, whether they uh, whether they need fully manual, constant, automatic uh, breathing, or if they can slightly breathe on their own, they um, they use trigger mode. So that's easy. So the sensor's waiting for it to see a vacuum. See if I blow on that pipe. This side. It doesn't start if I blow. Only if it sees it go under zero. Now this machine is just a demonstration machine. It's not designed to actually be a ventilator. So this just I'm doing this just uh, to show that it can be done by uh, a small research company, maybe uh, in other countries. Um, in North America, all the, the, the big ventilator companies have pretty much have it covered. They don't really, really don't need help from uh, hobbyists. But in other countries, you never know. So that's the reason I'm doing this. But I just wanted to get it all working, and it does. It seems to work. And once the, if the numbers were all calibrated, it, uh, then it would make more sense to a medical person instead of like just numbers in inches. Uh, normally, uh, inches, uh, centimeters of water is used to measure the pressure of the uh, low pressures in the body, like uh, lung pressure. And uh, let's say um, 
if you're checking your blood pressure, that's a higher pressure, so they use millimeters of mercury. So mercury is for high pressure and water is for low pressure. And what I'll do is I'll just show a bit of the electronics. Now in the controller, basically I've added two pressure sensors and they are a zero to two and a half PSI plus and minus two and a half PSI pressure sensor. I've got the, uh, the power supply, the steppered motor drive. In the back I've got the relay board that controls the two air solenoids, 120 volt, that's all I had, so I used what I had. And there's the, uh, the little uh, controller board running a PIC processor. But that's all it is to it, and then the program I wrote. And that's the... If you have any questions, contact me at Larkin Automation. Um, or uh, my email is larkin at storm.ca. This uh, video is uh, not intended to be a real medical video. It's only an experimenter's version of a ventilator. So uh, be very careful if you're ever building a real ventilator. You need to get it uh, inspected and uh, certified before it should ever be used on a patient. All right. Take care and wear a mask and cover your face, please. Bye.